Yes. Let me, uh, I'm going to stand and blow the show far and give me one second. I'll be back and play. Hallelujah. I'm going to step to the side over here. I'll let you see his view. Neighbors behind me. Yeah, he gave it to us. <laughs> the ram was real, he was sweet. He gave it to us. Can y'all hear me, Tammy? Yes. Okay. You can hold on to it. I'm gonna pray right now, okay? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Who are all praise be unto you, unto your mighty name, Father. Let your awesome an excellent and mighty name be set upon. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together as Mishpaka, as family, Father. We are in various places throughout this earth right now. And we thank you, Father, for this technology that and we're able to use this technology in a righteous way. And we thank you for that, Father. We ask, Abba, that you gather with us, Father, for we know that when two or three are gathered, you are right there in the midst. And we pray, Father, that you will allow us to feel and experience your excellent and your awesome presence in us and with us this day. We thank you for the Feast of Unleavened, Abba. Hallelujah. Thank you for our Passover lamb, our Pesach lamb, Yah Yahusha Hamashiach. Throughout this feast, Father, we've been, uh, it, we know this feast, it, it really talks about or it points us to removing the leaven from ourselves. Those things that are not like you, those things that we have picked up in this world, even while we're in this walk that are that could be hindering us in our relationship with you. We remove those things from us right now, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this feast, this time that you've given us to do an introspection within ourselves, do a, a housekeeping within ourselves, and see if we are lining up with your standard, your word. Hallelujah. Father, we confess and repent our sins, and we ask, God, that you will mercifully and graciously purge us and cleanse us of everything in us that is not like you, creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit and a clean mind and a right mind hallelujah we thank you father for the gift of life and we thank you for your faithfulness for you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness if we confess and repent our sins and father we confess and repent we ask that you will please blot out our transgressions our iniquities and our sins keep us remember us according to your loving kindnesses and your tender mercies remember us as your children father thank you for this Feast of Unleavened. And on this seventh day, we gather, Father, and we thank you for your goodness in our lives, for everything that you have done for us and for your deliverance. Hallelujah. Thank you for your perfect plan for us. We give all praise, honor, and esteem unto your mighty name, Father. And it is in the mighty name of Yahushua Hamashiach that we pray. We say, Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are you acting all shy? You acting all shy? You can hold on to it. So, hallelujah. Good to see y'all, family. What we will do is uh, we'll do we'll briefly talk about something, we'll read something, and then we will close out with prayer again. Um, I did have one song I wanted to play, but what I wanted to do so we can get understanding, I kind of want to hear from the Mishpaka. Uh, because I want this to be a brief gathering. Um, enjoy this day. Spend time. I know that some may not have been able to take the day off. Uh, but if you can, enjoy this day. Hallelujah. If you're off, relax. Take your time. Uh, there's no servile work on this day. So, I mean, meaning you don't work for an employer, um, you know, or your own business. Hallelujah. Um, but just wanted to, you know, ask what the Mishpah guy wants to do. Um, I know that I got some inquiries about this. So what I'll do, 
And just to make it simple, I'm going to show you something real quick, and then we'll do a, a brief phrase break. But I'll show you this. This is what I wanted to get to. <laughs> this right here. So the Pesach, Pesach. Um, and we'll go over this in scripture, but I wanted to show you this before we praise. So the Pesach is technically an event. I know when I first came into the truth, I had to get that understanding as well. It's actually not a whole day. So the Pesach technically begins the 15th day. When they slayed the lamb at the, at the 14th day at evening, the 15th day was beginning. Um, and when you read scripture, you had to read several different accounts, but it'll, it'll tell you, you get an understanding as you go before. That's why it says between the evenings. Now in the KJV, it may say something different, but in the TS 2009, it says actually between the evenings. Between the evenings is what you call twilight. It's the time where it's, it's now evening, the sun is set, but it's not all the way dark yet. There's still some light in the sky, but it's, but it's technically the sun is set. And that was when they slayed the lamb in the initial Pesach. So, and then that's, between, that's the time between Erev, which is evening, and Laila, which is night. So that time between where it's still a little daylight in the, in the sky, and it's also a little nighttime in the sky, but it's not quite bright and it's not all the way dark. That is actually the Pesach time. That day is already started, and that is also already the 15th day. As you notice, they sat down and ate the Passover lamb with unleavened bread. So it was already day one. Um, so we'll go over that in a moment. I just wanted to show you this on the calendar. So wherever you see that number, that circle, that day technically starts the day before, that evening. So as you can see, the 15th day technically started Friday night going into Saturday night. The 21st day started yesterday at evening and it ends tonight at evening. So this is the last day of the Feast of Unleavened. Um, we'll go over First Fruits tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, uh, First Fruits is technically, I know you may have been taught differently, but we'll go over this uh, at, some more, at some point, probably more in depth. But First Fruits is technically outside the Feast of Unleavened. It's not in the Feast of Unleavened. It's, it's, I know I used to think that before as well, but if you read the script, you'll see that it's actually outside the Feast of Unleavened. That was the day that they could eat bread again. It was after, it was on that day. Um, so, hallelujah. But we'll go into some things tomorrow. I just wanted to show this before. I, during the presentation, I actually wanted to go a little bit more in depth on this um, because our people, we need understanding. We need to know exactly why we do what we do when we do it. And the visuals actually help. So um, when we have this visual, one can see it like this. And actually, we should probably start at some point sending out a calendar with all of our feast days on there. Um, by the way, if you need a letter, I already have a letter written for your employer. You can request all the days off ahead of time. However, the days may change. Like I was just telling you, uh, Claudia, the, day, the dates may change. But to have a letter on file, actually let your employer know that you need the religious exemption for a celebration of, uh, of your faith. So, um, yeah, just let me know and I can see you that. I think I've sent one to, uh, I've sent one to someone already this year, I think. So I already have it written up uh, and it's signed as well. So I'll just send it whenever you need it. Yeah, um, I would like to have one of those, please. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same here. Um, I have a question. Okay, yes. being on, you said that the feast day will, um, based on studies and it will change. But my question is with um, with Passover just ended and with the counting of the Omar to go to, um, for us to get the third, um, the sixth, I'm sorry, the sixth, which is a fifth day, which is Pentecost. So it will, mm -hmm. be, a, it will, it will be a different count if it's a week later uh, when we count the Omar. So, uh, so we, we've talked about this, and that's why I said Shavuot may be one week later, because when we meet, we're going to find out if, if they were doing the count from the 17th or from the 24th. Technically, we're supposed to do it from tomorrow, I mean, from the 24th, which is Sunday. So, but I want to see 
because Doc, um, he actually went mentioned this. I don't know if y'all were sitting down when he went over first fruits on Sunday. I don't know if y'all had a chance to hear, but he actually mentioned that he know we know it's not in in the feast of unleavened like it's been taught before. First fruits is not in the feast of unleavened. So you mentioned um briefly like. Um, when we were like talking, like a few of us were talking, he was mentioning it briefly. So um, maybe yeah. he may do a teaching on that more in depth. Um, but it's not when you look at script, you'll see because this came to my mind a while ago. And me, him, and I were talking, and come to find out, he was already on it as well. Because I was like, I don't think it's in eleven, and he actually was on the same study, so he was on, along the same lines, brother. So that was refreshing to know that we were on the same page. So before we teach it to the Mishpah guy, we're going to make sure everything is uh, we're solid on the way we bring it up. Is it B over there? He ain't going to mess with you. So, but what I'll do is um, I'm going to go over it a little bit tomorrow. And like we'll have a brief gathering tomorrow. We'll have our regular Shabbat. Uh, we're going to really kind of close out feast talk about that from my understanding right now i'm planning to talk about the, the resurrection a bit and also the feet first fruits but um i'll go as the ruach hyperdash leads me so that's what i plan on talking about but i'll see which way i'm led but so while we're on this i guess i'm going i'm ready to go ahead and just talk about this now um and and for brevity what i'll do i'll do this real quick you can still see my screen but i'm gonna share my other screen with you and we're going to look at some script. I'm going to show you this so you can see what I'm looking at. So let me stop share and then let me, let me share my screen. So let me know when you can see what I got. You should be able to see it now. Can you see it? Thumbs up or yes? And we'll probably try to close out by one. Yes, you can see it. Toda. So I'll show you something in Exodus 12. I'm going to scroll on down. I'm going to show you something first. Obviously, you know, they got the lamb. Well, I'll read it real quick. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe and to Aharon in the land of Mishraim, saying, this new month, that term move right there is inserted, by the way. The term is move, is month. It's not uh, move. But you see, it's italicized for a reason. I, I'm bringing that out for a reason, because when we talk about the calendar, we're going to show you something later. Excuse me. Down, okay. So one piece of one, okay. You can play though. So the term moon right there is actually not that's not the right term. It's actually supposed to say month. As you can see, they got it italicized. So what that means is, and we'll bring out some later, we're on a revelation that the I don't want to get into it right now. I just leave it, I'm gonna leave it like that right now. It ain't it ain't time to bring that out yet. But I just know that you see it italicized with your own two eyes. That means it's added. That means it's not there. The term is not supposed to be moon says this new month is the beginning of the new of new months for you. It is the first new month of the year for you. So this is when your year starts. Speak to the, all the congregation of Israel saying on the 10th day of this new month, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb on the 10th day, according to the house of your father, a lamb or household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the beings. According to each man's need, you make your account for the lamb. Let the lamb be a perfect one a year old. Take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, same new month. All the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall slay it between the evenings. They shall take some of the blood, put it on the doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. They shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boil it all with water, but roast it in fire, his head with his legs and his inward parts. Do not leave of it until the morning and what remains of it until morning you are to burn with fire. This is how you eat it. Your loins gird it, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Pesach of Yahuwah. I shall pass through the land of Mishraim on that night, strike the firstborn in land, and I'm summarizing as I read, and, stri and, strike, and shall strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the mighty ones of Egypt, I shall execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you, and let the plague not come on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall become to you a remembrance. You shall celebrate it as a feast, a festival to Yahuwah throughout your generations, that means forever, celebrated as a festival and everlasting law. Seven days you eat unleavened bread. Indeed, on the first day you cause leaven to cease from your houses. And whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day that shall be cut off from Israel. 
I'm going to get down to this part here. I want you to see verse 18. On the first day is a set-apart gathering. On the seventh day, you have a set-apart gathering. No work at all is done on them, on only that which is eaten by every being. That alone is prepared by you. And you shall guard the festival of Mazot, unleavened bread. For on this same day, I brought your divisions out of the land of Egypt, and you shall guard this day throughout your generations and everlasting law. In the first moon, excuse me, on the, in the first month, on the 14th day of the, of the new month, in the evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the new moon in the evening. Seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. For if anyone eats, eats what is leaven, that same being shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether sojourner or native of the land. Do not eat that which is leaven in all your dwellings. You are to eat unleavened bread. Hallelujah. So we know that this memorial really points us to introspection. This is a time of deliverance. By the way, Pesach is a time of war as well. Most High was bringing judgment down on Egypt. He's bringing judgment down on the uh, the gods of Egypt. Um, so in that regard, this is deliverance for us. And also this is, de this is deliverance for our ancestors. And also it's a time for us to reflect on that deliverance and also the personal deliverance that we've experienced in our own lives. So it's not just a memorial where we celebrate what he did for them. We celebrate that indeed. And we also celebrate how he's delivered us. Hallelujah. The scripture is cyclical. As you can see, there are things that repeat themselves in the scripture. Um, hallelujah. So this is a reminder. This is a real personal feast. I take the pace I real personally. Um, I've only celebrated it corporately twice. I usually do this a whole different way when I'm at home. Um, I do it differently, totally differently. I take this feast very seriously. It's a very personal feast. Um, and it's a, it's a really a family style feast, meaning it's a very intimate feast. You're with your family, you're with your loved ones, you're in your household, and that's the way you celebrate it. It just hits different when you do it like that. Um, so I do it different. When I've done it corporately, it's, it's just been different. I've always done it personally, uh, but I've only celebrated it twice corporately. Um, and I think even then, the times I did that, I still kept the pace out myself personally twice. So I did it twice in those years, if I recall correctly. Actually, I take that back. I think I celebrated the Pesach three times corporately, now that I think about it, because I did it with another congregation before I came to the Great Awakening. So, and then the two times I did it, I actually kept the Pesach twice. So I look at this feast. This is a real, this is the first one of the year. This also is the only feast where you get a do-over. You, you only, you, if you unclean at the first time of the first keeping of the feast, you keep it the next month on the same days. It goes the same way. So it's something about this feast. The Most High wants us to get this feast right. He wants us to do this right. Sweetheart. <laughs> so my little one over there playing. But she, if she too loud, y'all just let me know. She enjoying this sunlight. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a do over. But you know that's why I say when we look at that, you get a do over with this feast. And then when we go to the the New Testament, Shaul talks about how we keep the feast uh, with unleavened. Hallelujah, keeping the feast not with the old leaven keep the feast unleavened. Um, but the thing is, is that we know leaven represents sin. And I'll pull up another place I wanted to show. Y'all still see my screen, right? I'm going to go Deuteronomy 16 real quick. Yes. Guard the new moon of Abib and perform the Pesach to Yahuwah, your Elohim. For in the new month of Abib, Yahuwah, your Elohim, brought you out of the Mishraim by night. You shall slaughter the Pesach to Yahuwah, your Elohim, from the flock and the herd in the place where Yahuwah chose his name. Eat no leavened bread with it for seven days. You eat unleavened bread with it, bread of affliction. Because you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, so that you remember the day in which you came out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. No leaven should be seen with you in all your border for seven days. Neither should any of the meat which you slaughter in the evening, which you slaughter in the evening on the first day, stay all night until the morning. You're not allowed to slaughter the Pesach within any of your gates, which Yahuwah Yahweh gives you, but at the place where Yahuwah Yahweh chooses to make his name dwell, there you slaughter the Pesach in the evening, at the going down of the sun, at the appointed time you came out of Egypt. So it's real, real specific. You shall roast and eat it in the place which Yahuwah, your Elohim, chooses. In the morning you shall turn and go to your tent. Six days you eat unleavened bread. On the seventh day there is a closing festival to Yahuwah, your Elohim. You do no work. Hallelujah. Akoti uh, Sophia, I see you got your hand raised. Go ahead, Akoti. I, I, I do have something to say. I think maybe I should wait until when you're finished. I speak because I have to speak about the lamb. I definitely need to go back because 
when you said you, when you mentioned um, the scripture, I knew we were going to pass over the lamb, and then and then you mention it again in Deuteronomy, then in Exodus. So I'll I'll rather wait until when you're finished, then I I speak. Yeah, um, one of the things about it, and let me pull some up real quick, because I'll speak on that real quick. Um, Okay, so uh, yeah, this is where I want to go to, 1 Corinthians 5. And then I'll speak on the lamb real quick. So Shaul says, therefore, uh, your boasting is not good. Let me share my screen. You can see what I'm looking at. He says, your boasting is not good. Do you not, not know that a little leaven leavens the entire lump? Therefore, cleanse out the old leaven so that you are a new lump as you are unleavened. For also Messiah our Pesach, was slaughtered for us. So then let us celebrate the festival, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. So in regards to the lamb, um, one thing that there was a, a, a sort of a division that kind of arose um, where some people, there was a division on if we could keep the lamb that we did not cook and cook that on another day. Now, technically, it doesn't say you just have to eat lamb on the first day. You can eat lamb any day. However, um, that means if you if you if you wanted to slaughter another lamb on day four and eat some lamb, then you, it's quite possible that you could do that. As a matter of fact, for seven days, it says to bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. So during this feast, personally, what I do, I grill every day. I literally let I grill uh, an offering of food to the Most High every day in that regard. So obviously it's not a, a Pesach offering or there's no more sacrifice for sin. Messiah is our, is our offering, hallelujah. But I personally, when I keep it by myself or keep it personally rather, I, I grill um, and I make unleavened. So now there was a division that kind of occurred because some of the lamb that we had was not cooked. So there was a talk where some were saying we should throw it out. There were some that were saying that, well, we can eat it because we didn't cook it. Um, it wasn't part of the the uh, the first fire. It wasn't, it was not cooked. Um, and personally, actually, I think we should have probably thrown it out. Now looking back at it, probably think we should have thrown it out. Uh, me personally, I didn't eat any more lamb after the first day, not from that first slaughter. I, I bought the lamb personally from, well, I went to the, the farmer to buy it. All those lambs came from the same slaughter. They were part of the same slaughter. Uh, they weren't from different slaughters. They were all slaughtered together from my understanding. The farmer actually gave, he slaughtered all the lambs he had. In Mississippi, he says, people don't eat a lot of lamb from my understanding. They don't have a taste for it from some of the talks I was having with him. So he slaughtered everything he had on the lamb side. So he um, he got that you know processed halal and we got that meat. Now, technically, looking back at it, I think we, we should have thrown it out. I feel like I could have been a more more firm on that and told them that, guys, we cannot eat this lamb. Um, and But we didn't. We also did not burn the the, re the leftovers on the grill. We left the fire. Um, we left the what we our discards at the home away from our fire. We didn't have our fire with us. We were on a different property. We didn't account for all of these things. We were on someone else's property. It would have looked weird if we was out there making a fire pit and burning animal flesh. Um, it's, just, it's, it's just looking back at it, we didn't account for it. It's not an excuse. It's just looking back for looking back and seeing how we didn't account for certain things, um, which we didn't account for. And we should have actually had the fire with us or brought the, the discards with us in a whole nother van and burned them on the property. Now that was our original plan. However, our original plan didn't work out like that. We were planning to burn everything and put it right back on the grill. However, we didn't have everything with us. Hold on, sweetheart. You gonna close that door right there so the flies don't get in? Okay, so originally we left our discards at the at the rental home. We didn't bring them with us. Um, again, no excuse. Like I said, it's just, we looking back on these things. And that's why I say personally, I feel like we could have thrown, we should have thrown the lamb out, not eating it anymore. However, there was a division once we, we met on it quickly with some mores and um and actually an elder as well and the thought was that we never the first part of the there was a part of the lamb slaughter 
that never touched the grill. It was it was always it was kept in this, I guess you can say, and I'm kind of using this term now, like its own storehouse. It was never it never was fired up. It was always kept in its own storehouse. It wasn't fired up, but um, and so that and that thought came along that we can still eat that lamb. It never was fired up and nobody ate it. Like nobody messed over it. It wasn't fired up and then nobody ate it. Then we'd have to burn it. But it wasn't fired up in the first place. It was still uh, raw. So in that regard, there was a division there. And it's something that we as Mores can talk about and get a little bit more aligned on. Uh, because there was a division amongst some felt like we should throw it away. Some felt like we did we, we shouldn't. Personally, I, I felt led not to even eat any more lamb after that first day. I knew they was part of the same slaughter. So my own conviction didn't allow me to eat any more of the lamb. And I feel like I could have been a little bit more firm on that, um, you know, being over the food team and just saying, hey, guys, we got to throw this out. Um, so that's something that we as Maurice, are we have to speak on because uh, there were some things uh, we we like we got a debriefing meeting coming up, so that's one of the things that we can also um, discuss as well. So, uh, if it comes to my mind, so or if somebody yes. else brings it up. Go Thank ahead. you. The, the the thing is, you just read it in Deuteronomy 16. You just got your answer in Deuteronomy 16. If you go back over Deuteronomy 16, it, you you got it in Exodus, right? But it, it is it's it's more plain in Deuteronomy 16 that you just read. It tells you whatever left over. It's a whatever left over. I do understand we, we, you, you buy a lot of lamb, but you buy it for one purpose. And it's because of that purpose why it has to be discarded. Or discarded, that's the word. Do you get what I'm saying? No. no, no, no. I Trust me, I get it. That's why I said, I mean, and that's where the division came about. Because if you read the script, and remember, we read the English translation as well, by the way. If you go back to the original Exodus 12, it tells you to slaughter the lamb. And if you go on down, I'm going to read something for you. It says, you shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread, bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Okay, now you go on two verses down. It says, don't eat it raw, no boil it. You got to roast it. Mm -hmm. In verse 10, it tells you, don't leave of it until the morning. Technically, this is talking about what you roasted. Mm -hmm. but what remains of it, you burn with fire. So if you roast all of this lamb and nobody eats it, and you eat enough of it, you, you got to burn the rest, can't have leftovers from it. So the division came about where there was some lamb that we didn't cook, and they didn't, and they that's where the division came about. To me personally, like I said, my own personal conviction, I'm, I'm cool with burning all of it. Like we just didn't eat it, we, it all came from the same slaughter. If it was a different slaughter, maybe that's a different story. Yeah. Maybe that's a different story. Maybe if we had two different separate slaughters, we cooked the first slaughter, we eat that up and we burn that up. But the second slaughter, we didn't, that was part of a different slaughter. We didn't, we didn't touch that. That's different. But my own personal conviction, like I said, I feel like I could have been more firm on that. And mm. actually, you know, I, I feel like I could have been in charge of the food team. I could have just been like, hey, guys, we got to burn it. We just had to go to the store and buy something else. Um, but like chicken or something like that. But which we had, we actually ended up cooking the chicken as well. And we had more than enough chicken, I think, but it's just... Like I said, looking back, hindsight, it's a way we could have done it better. And we, it was a learning experience. This was our first time cooking everything together. And like I said, personally, me, when I do this at home, like uh, I, don't, I don't take no lamb <laughs> to the next day. Everything gone. I cook everything I got, and then it's gone. That's it. But then again, I'm not cooking for 400 people. So <laughs> that's a little different. But so it's, it's a, that's where the division occurred, you know. And then Deuteronomy, obviously, when you read Deuteronomy, and I'll pull it back up if you want to look at it real quick. I think it was verse, um, I think it was verse 8, 16. Let me, let me share my screen. Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, it says you roast it, verse 7. Then it says six days you eat it. So verse 6 says, yeah, verse 4. Neither should any of the meat which you slaughter in the evening on the first day stay all night to the morning. Now, the way we read that, is that talking about roasted lamb or is it talking about what you slaughter, period? So that's why I said if it was part of a different slaughter, me personally, I knew that was part of the same slaughter. So in my own conscience, my own conviction, I could not eat that extra lamb. So, yeah, and based on, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Claudia. Based on um, my understanding, 
and the text it said the, it didn't say if you didn't prepare it or not it said once you slaughter it for that purpose mm -hmm. so because slaughter right. for that we're supposed to discard it whether or not it's cooked or it's not cooked that's why the, yeah. the most specifically say if you have too much you get a family with too little and you bring it over and you share it amongst so whatever left over to get to disregard it that's my understanding but on and basin right. you said you were in charge of it and looking back and so on that's commendable and thank you for that yes and and also brother will if you read if you read this um four again it says that in before the morning before the morning of daybreak that means within the night you, you get what i'm saying so eat it and before right. daylight eat burn it before daylight right yeah right. so the the thing is too like after everybody left like we were still in the back eating lamb Mindy. so we, we could have at that time like looking back now we could have we were giving out some to people as well i told them like they had to eat it you know basically you had it this is another thing we were trying to figure out as well because people were not in their homes technically they had traveled to this feast so some were coming back there and they were getting what you call to go plates so the thing is, is I kind of told him, I was like, you got to eat it. I didn't, we, and that's what I talked to him already yesterday. Were they to eat it in the civic center or could they actually take it back to their hotel room? They actually traveled to the feast. So it was, it's kind of some things we had to iron out because of the way we're keeping this memorial now in these, we want to make sure we're keeping it according to scripture. And when people would travel to a feast, or they, do they eat everything there? Do they not take anything back to their, their own personal tent? Um, and that's why I say some things we definitely have to iron out. But personally, I didn't. Personally, I couldn't. I could, my convictions wouldn't even allow me to eat any more lamb because I knew it was part of that one sacrifice. And like I said, I could have really put my foot down more and just said, "Hey guys, we can't do this." And I feel like we as Morris kind of got caught up in the moment. I even if at one time I think I flip flopped. I was part of the, one of those conversations, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we didn't cook it, so we can eat it," even though my convictions were like, "I'm not going to eat it." You know what I'm saying? I think we were just, it was one of those things where we were kind of caught up. And I personally, that's why I said, I feel like looking back, I just feel like we could have done it better. We could have just thrown that lamb out. And I feel like I should have actually put my foot down more firm. And, you know, for that, I take the blame actually, you know, that's, that's my fault um, yeah. since I was in that position. Yahuwah is a merciful Elohim because he, he could have done anything to us that same night and he hasn't. So I'm just in my head, I'm saying, you know, something is hopefully is giving us another chance to get it right the second time. And I, I strongly oh, believe yeah. that yeah, it should yeah. be taken in your house. If you're going to follow um, the scripture as, as what is in Exodus, it's supposed to be in your house. And, and also, um, what is, I have something else to say. I, I can't remember. Also, I forgot. I forgot what oh. I have to say. But yeah, I believe it. The, is 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 a merciful Elohim. Is a Hallelujah. merciful. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes. Because the the, the 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 part of the food that was supposed to give it to him, that part was rotten. He wants the fat. He wants the burnt offering, and that's the part we were supposed to give it to him, and he didn't get it. He didn't get his food. You get what I'm saying? Because remember, when you burn the food, that's where you get the sweet the sweet scent from from it, and it goes up into his nostril. So that's his portion of the of the meal. To have the meal with us, and he didn't eat with us. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. That's why I say. I mean, looking back, there's a a lot of things that we can we can clean up. And Abba Yahuwah is indeed merciful. Hallelujah. He and that's the thing is he knows he knows where each of us are in our understanding. Um, and I'm actually I'm absolutely grateful for his mercy. Um, and, and that's why I say we, we still learning how to do these things in a, in a pagan society. We're still trying to learn how to navigate and do these things the right way according to his standard. And, um, and I'm, I'm grateful that he allows us leeway, so to speak, you know, uh, what well, he does allow us leeway. It's, it, it, and he, it's not that he approves of sin. He does not approve of sin. He's a merciful father. He's a good father. Hallelujah. So. And that's why I say I look at this and it's like I look back because I, I remember being in one of those conversations and I was like, yeah, we didn't we didn't we didn't cook it. You know what I'm saying? So we can we can eat it. You know what I'm saying? Try, I feel like in my own way, trying to convince myself.
to eat it, but I still couldn't overcome my own conviction. So I didn't even eat any more of the lamb. So that's why I say and it's like, you know, we should have probably just called a, a meeting quickly amongst the Zakanes and the Mores. Um, it's that we had a smaller meeting, but it could have been a larger meeting where we had more Zakanes there and also more and more raised there at the same time. So we can discuss this and hash it all the way out. Quickly look at the scripture together and make a call. Um, we all know what the call says. We all know what the scripture says. That's fine, sweetie. We all know what this, the scripture says. It was just that moment where it was like, wait, we got extra lamb. We didn't cook it. Maybe it's a good idea to cook it. And I actually should have put my foot down and said, you know, we can't eat it. We got to throw it out. It's part of the same slaughter, even if we didn't uh, didn't cook it. Like I said, I coach you, if it was a different slaughter, if the guy would have given me lambs in two different slaughters and he separated them according to the slaughter and we only cooked from one slaughter that first time, maybe that's a different discussion. Maybe then we could go back and, you know, possibly, you know, uh, revisit that second lamb that we didn't touch, part of a different slaughter. But that first, all of these four that we got were part of a, the same slaughter and i actually bought more lamb too so might have been might have been a fifth lamb thrown in there because i went and bought some extra before we came overall we had more than enough lamb and i think i bought no, that's not good. Mm -hmm. i think we threw about a thousand dollars probably if after that first day if i'm counting after that first day i think we probably had maybe a little bit over a thousand dollars too much mm -hmm. lamb, more than that. that's how much I we had. I, I, I would not say the lamb was too much. I would not say it, it what happened is that it was time management. The lamb prepared too late. It was not time management. I would, the, the, feed, the, the, the Friday uh, meal was not a matter of saying that uh, we had too much. You get what I'm saying? As, as we have spoken before, if it, has, if it was done at the civic center, Everybody, yeah. because people no, get you. this small, tiny thing. It's a piece. People need to eat so till they can't eat anymore. And then pull. Yeah. But now, people get this tiny, tiny piece of meat and it's like you just go through their eye teeth. Now, if it was done at the civic center, where, you know, everybody would get this chunk and it would not be too much. So what we, and another, I think one thing we'll talk about probably tomorrow is the length of the program. So people didn't actually start eating lamb and it was close to 10 o'clock, I think. It was late. Totally. That's what that, that was late. Yes, so, up everybody. And then before that, they had pieces of land they were doing for the ceremony. So if we go back and do this before, we should actually probably start the whole process if we're going to do it. A Thank lot you. Early, a lot Thank early, you. Way early, I, maybe two hours I, earlier. And uh, I, mm -hmm. yeah, that way we can have a, people can come back. Because people did come back, but a lot Thank of people you. had left. They was already leaving, but we had told people, hey, listen, we have more lamb if you want. So people started to come to the back where the grills were and they were just getting extra plates. But it wasn't that many people, but we should have made that announcement earlier that, hey, there's more. You know uh, what, what, what happened? What happened? Something. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Concerning the, um, the plates, mm -hmm. people cannot take these things to go out anywhere. It's something that has to be eaten on site. Everything has to be finished on site. When you yeah. said people came and you would yeah, and that was a, take Yeah, that was one of the things we recently talked about. I told one of Coach even when she came back, I was like, hey, you know you gotta eat this here. Uh, and also we think about a different scenario. Say we own the land, when we get our land built up and all the feast is gonna be in one spot anyway. People are gonna be living on the land, they're gonna be eating and uh, you know, staying in tents. They, you know, I don't know how the setup would be but basically on site would probably be the best call. Just saying, hey, eat it all as part of this feast. Don't take any outside of the feast. So it cannot be taken out. Yeah, don't take any away from, from the gathering. Eat it, and in, eat it in the gathering. Yeah, and that's, 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 that's the purpose. The main purpose of it is for Yah to be amongst us. Yes. So we have it together and we do the burning where Yah gets his share. So that's the main purpose of it. Take them and eat it together with each other, with young brethren. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying, and, and that's why I say I just I want to make sure we do it right going forward. Um, this one here, this is our friend. We had somebody that was going to cater this thing at first, and then that didn't that fell through. 
but that's not an excuse. We actually, we're supposed to do our own food. I, we, I want to. We just got to figure out how to do it better with time management, like you were saying, Akoti. That's one. And making sure we, we delegate responsibilities. We did all the cleaning up at the end. It was only a few people every night. And we, did, we had to recruit people to help us clean up. That was off. We was going to bed at late, late at night and had to get right back up in the morning. So going forward, it's a lot of areas for just, well, we just gonna have to clean up. We gonna have to make it a lot two smaller. More questions. So. I need to ask you two more questions, please. Go ahead. Who, who, who is really responsible for making a, the final decision when you all have um, situations like that? Who makes the final decision? Well, that's why I say technically, we should have called a council meeting right away. We meet as a, we got Zakane, we had a, we got a Zakane council for the elders. At that time, I don't think none of the Zakane were actually involved. One person who is my elder, he, although he's not considered an elder, he was in that meeting, but um, that's why I say, and it was just a few more We didn't have a, a true council meeting like we have, because we got a core that we meet and we actually discuss all kinds of things where we make a call on these things together. That time when, we didn't do it. It was a heat of the moment. Thing. When everybody has a different opinion, how, how do you? <clears throat> it's, all, it's always scripture. Scripture got to have the final word. And everybody so, interprets it differently. Well, mm. if, it, if there's a difference in interpretation, we got to go exactly how the script says. That's why I say, if I'm looking at it, if I look at it in hindsight, I should have just put my foot down and say, hey, listen, because my own conviction, I couldn't eat more than lamb. Yes, that you should so have. I should have just said, hey, listen, guys, we can't eat it. If we if we unclear, if we got two different interpretations, let's always go with the safe bet. Can't eat it. The scripture says we can't eat it. So if if it's if there's a difference in interpretation, then we have to do the best we can to come to an agreement on that, you know, on that interpretation. If we can. And if we if we can't, which I think we can, because we've 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 had to talk about things before. That's why I say, but if we if it comes to a point where it's just we too, we too far off on different ends of the spectrum, we just got to say, okay, let the word, you know, obviously it's going to be the standard at all times. But if we can't interpret it, if we're not on the same page, let's just read it as it says literally and go from there. So it says that you can't eat it. Let's not add anything to it. Say, oh, well, it wasn't cooked. Oh, well, it wasn't, you know, but it was part of the same slaughter. Let's just throw it out. Let's just. That's, that's treated all like it was part of the same. It was cooked. You know what I mean? Okay. I could have just I could have just put my foot down at, in a different way. Yeah. And I, I you should have got a bit in for that. But anyway, oh. how how does somebody <laughs> no, become no. a more in your is that it's an organization? I don't know what it is. Is the corporation, organization, a church, a, I don't you know. Say how does someone how become a more? Become a more. Yeah, because it's like every time I come, I see more mores and more younger people, and I'm wondering, what what is the qualification? How how do they get into that um, so-called leadership? You, so there's there's a there's a, a vetting process, and and you have to also uh, there's a training as well. So all of our mores went through a training. So obviously, being a more is not a is not something like a job you pick. It's a calling. So you go through this, you go, you get vetted. Before oh, you... Hold up, hold up. So all these people who are there, they are called to be Maurice. Do they even know these people, the people who appoint them? So if anyone wants to be a Maurice as part of this organization, they have to go through that vetting process. Everybody's not what you call a leading Maurice. So every Maurice that you hear with that Maurice title, they don't run an assembly. Some are what you call assisting Maurice. The term Maurice just means teacher. Some mm -hmm. are head Maurice. So some are head mores, meaning they have their own assemblies. That and and so every more that you see, or every person that you see, where you may they they'll announce somebody and they'll say more this or more that. That person may be an assisting more, or they may be in a in a ministering position, but not what you call a lead more over a, a body of people. So, Mr. Will, is um is is why do you all um accept women as teachers in your organization? I don't know what that is, if it's an organization or a church, or I don't know what to call it. Do you all accept women as teachers in there? Can women be teachers? As, as teachers? Yeah, we yeah. have we have what you call moras. That's a female teacher. I, that's why I'm asking. So a woman can teach in you all's um, 
in a, in a certain regard, the woman can teach as long as it's according to script. So a woman is not in a position of a lead moray over a body of men um, according to the script. But as far so she as- she can teach? Is um, that what you're saying? She can she, teach? She can teach on certain regards and, and mostly it's uh, over women ministry. Women, it's not right? A, yeah, yeah. Like if you read Titus, you read mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So, mm -hmm. but we definitely, the women are honored. Let me make sure I make that clear. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, family, I got somebody who's trying to get into the room. They are, they are still a, they're still in Christianity, but they're coming into the truth. So I, I don't want them to come in on this part of the conversation. <laughs> if you understand what I mean. I have no, no questions. So, you put I mean, again. Say that one, say that one I, more time. I need clarity on a lot of things that I see you all doing. So. Yeah. No, we we'll, we we'll, we can talk about that at a, at a different time. Um, okay. We can, so. We can talk. So I'm already real, I'm not done with you as it. Let the person in because I'm going to talk about the lamb again so the person can come in. You, so you, you, talk about hmm? with the person coming in. He don't want to talk it. So another okay. time. Okay. Um, Mara Will, do you remember when we spoke about, um, but you don't want to tell me about we found this gentleman, this Hebrew gentleman that raised chicken? I know. Uh, I did? Don't, I don't know if it was you saying that we found someone, but it was too late to get the chicken from him. He raised chicken and he's um, Israelites. I don't remember. I don't know if I know a Hebrew that raises chicken. Okay, the guy so I, I got the lamb from, he does. He has chicken, but he, uh, yeah, he has chicken. Oh, okay. All right. Don't worry. I think, then, I think he has chicken. Yeah. I, I guess I'm, I was hearing wrong. That's okay. Thank you. Can I yeah. call you personally anytime to ask you questions? Of, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, because I, I honestly, I really need to clarify some things that I saw over there, so. If, actually, if you email me, that gives me a better record because then I might, there might be some things I can take to my elders. Like if you want a more okay. clear so answer. So they can hit right. me some more? <laughs> say, that, say that one more time. So they can hit me some more? <laughs> no, they're not gonna hate you, no, no. You can ask, trust me, I've been asked all kind of questions. <laughs> so you know, that's, that's what being in this position, you off top, you in this position. You, I take this, I take this mantle very seriously. So I don't, I don't take this lightly. It's something I, I take seriously. So if you have a question, you should be able to ask that question. Um, and I'm gonna give you the answer that I know. If I don't know it, I'll let you know I don't know it. Or I'll give you the answer that I'm led to give. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to fake the funk, so to speak. I'm not gonna fake it. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously, you know, there we know that there are differences amongst our communities, but IUIC does things different. Uh, other camps do things different. Uh, there's other groups that, I was a group I used to fellowship with before I came to Great Awakening, and they actually still use the, the terms Jesus and God and Lord. They don't go, they don't use the Hebrew, but they keep the law. They just don't, they don't deal with the Hebrew, but you know, that's their prerogative, that's their that's they decision. Um, one of my elders that I've learned from quite a quite a bit before I came to the Great Awakening, and he's still my elder, um, he pretty much taught me quite a bit about what I know about the script, uh, this man. So uh, that's one of my elders that I still um, he, I still fellowship with so and get advice from. So he's outside the Great Awakening. So we're not what you call um, like a microcosm, like everybody uh, just do things one way. We're trying to get on the same page with certain things. Um, there's, there's a lot of issues that we're still ironing out because when you bring a lot of men together from various backgrounds and some have Pentecostal background, apostolic background, you know, some were high up in the church, some were, you know, when you bring all these men together and they're learning the Hebrew way and they've been walking this Hebrew way for some time, there are things you have to iron out because there are pieces of Christianity that we all still have to clean out of us that we learn. That's just facts. We just there's some stuff that we was it was ingrained in us. We just gotta unlearn that stuff because it was the wrong way. But it was so in deeply ingrained in us, we gotta dig it out. Um, so the main even, thing to have all things in common. In common, that is the main thing. Marcel, look, I'm gonna use your own scripture. Don't put the stick in that. I'm going to use a favorite script, um, Bible verse, Marcia. Don't use oh, that. Oh, can't hear me. 
Go ahead. Um, I'm going to use one of Marcia's favorite Bible verse. Um, when um, the Pharisees, the studies, was it the, some of, the, some of the, the Pharisees and John's up um, disciples said to Yahushua, why is it that we are fasting and your people are not fasting? You know, and Yahushua said, you cannot throw new wine in old bottles. And what, what, were, what were they doing? To, they were to purify mm -hmm. themselves. They have to go into fasting and prayer. You get what I'm, can you hear me? Nobody's hearing me. Yeah. I, I can hear you. Oh, 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 sorry. So, so to get to be of the person to come up to the level that you are wanting and you're coming from Pentecostal, you're coming from wherever, you have to go into fasting and prayer, not me. The scripture said that. Because John people were already polluted with one doctrine and the Pharisees are polluted with one doctrine. For them to be ready for Yahushua's doctrine, they had to go and fast him. I didn't say it, he said it. You cannot yeah. throw new wine into, into, old, into old bottle. You have to and clean up the bottle. Yeah. You have to but, clean the bottle. You have to clean up what you have inside of you to, to receive but, the but, new. Uh, May I say something? Um, then again, to we all coming into the this Hebrew faith with different I ideologies, different belief system, different stuff that we have been taught, different background, and and as um, uh, Murray will rightfully say, with men and some men have a lot of egos, and also to really understand, you gotta go to the Hebrew context to get what we're saying. So we have to just put aside and ask the Most High to really lead us and. None of us have it all. It doesn't matter how we think that we get it and this one is the right way and that one is the right way. None of us have it together. So we just got to be humble, humble ourselves and stay at the most high feet and ask him for clarity yes. and action as he leads us. Because yes. none of us have it. Yes, I'm with you 100% on that. None of us have it the right way. And we should humble ourselves. I do agree with you 100% on that. That Thank is you. where all things in common comes in again, you know, yeah. having all things in common, putting away everything that we have already learned and every man come together having all things in common. So the doctors can have the new wine, the same level, the same thing. And if we all, we all wrong together, but having all things in common. If we don't have all things in common, it's confusion every time and chaos. And that is what is happening. We have to have all things in common, especially the leaders. So that's that's, and that, and that's what we know. And it sounds it sounds easy on on paper, my coach. It's a little bit different when you put it in practicality. Um, I, I understand all things in common. That's not just talking about doctrine wise. It's also talking about resources. There shouldn't be anybody poor in your community either. Uh, yes. Be in lack. So we understand that. Trust me. Um, there are some things we all we're all trying to get on page with. The Great Awakening is still a, a new organization, pretty yeah. much. Uh, it's less than it's about three years old. So now there are the men that have been walking have been walking in the faith. We've all been walking at various lengths of time in the Hebrew faith, but coming together is different. And that's why I say you have to you have to there's a there's a there's a meshing period that has to occur. Um, so that's why I say you it's, it's trust me we understand these things. It's not none of we know the script, so that's the thing. Is that's that part is is clear. Uh, it's getting there, and that part is really being humble and trusting the Most High, and that's that's how you get there. So every man is at a different place in that walk, and we work well together as brothers. I will say that because we've already had to deal with certain things as a group, as a new group. We've had to deal with a lot, with different things, a lot of stuff behind the scenes that the Mishpacha don't know anything about. I just say it like that. We've had to deal with some some wild stuff already. So um, that's why I say we work well together. So we get in there and things are only going to get better. So um, it's, you know, that's why I say there's going to be, oh, by the way, if you do have concerns, Marcia, or if you got questions, they're supposed to be sending out a survey. I don't know when, so don't quote me on when, but there's going to be a post meeting survey where you can, all the questions you have and all your concerns, you can literally put them in the survey. You can ask, yes. and you can ask those questions. So there went, that tool is supposed to be being sent out. When I find out more about it, I'll let you, I can let the Mishpaka know. But that was talked about already, how they're going to do a survey. So they want all the feedback, the good, the bad, bring it, just bring it all. Whatever you, 
the questions you got as well, you'll have an avenue to bring those up too. So, so yeah. But Mr. McCoy, I don't, I don't want to hold y'all. Um, I, what I did want to go over uh, was those, those things. Uh, if you want to see the the talk, I didn't know y'all didn't see the talk. I think my talk starts at like somewhere in the third hour on the video, on the Shabbat lesson video. I can pull it up. And just you can go back and watch my talk. Uh, one thing I talked about because you got to remember something. We had Christians in the audience as well. And sometimes we as Hebrews, we get so mechanical in how we keep the Torah. We get so mechanical that we lose sight of this is supposed to be out of our, about our hearts. If you go back to Exodus, most I said when I brought them out of Egypt, I wasn't talking to them about sacrifices or offerings. I wasn't talking to them about that. I told them obey my voice. They didn't have my Torah written down like that. Then. I said obey my voice. So it's about my heart. Then he gave us his marriage contract, the, the Torah. The first, he's always been after the heart. The instructions mold us in, to be more like him. We made in his image. We in a fallen state. To get back to his image, he's saying, follow my instructions. These, this is how you mold your character. Don't kill, don't, don't cheat on your wife, don't steal, don't do these different things, don't covet, treat you, don't, don't exploit your neighbor. This is, I'm telling you, be like me. Love, hallelujah. Love from a genuine place. So these things train us to be, they, they mold us to be like him, be more like him. So we're originally made in his image and his likeness, and he's bringing us back to that perfect state through his instructions, through his Ruach HaKodesh. We now have an atonement. So through, and also through Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. So we now can come back, we redeem back. New Testament, Old Testament, if you want to use those terms, what's in both places? The law, original covenant, renewed covenant. The law still there, the same time, the same place. The original covenant, it was written on tablets of stone. New covenant is written on tablets on our hearts. It's written on tablets of flesh, our hearts. So now it's in us, and he's given us the Holy Spirit, who is the game changer, who helps us keep his laws. It tells us that in Ezekiel. I'm going to put my spirit within you, and he's going to help you do my laws. Hallelujah. So he wants us to keep his instructions. Both sides of the book. The book is one continuous book. He's still trying to get us to keep his instructions. Nothing wrong with the instructions. Something wrong with the heart. So the heart has to be fixed. So I talk about some of this in the talk um, on the Shabbat. So um please check it out when you get a chance but i kind of go into some things on that i may put a little bit of it in the, tomorrow's lesson but i'm not sure right now but uh the main thing is is that we have to understand why we do what we do we got to understand why messiah came when i was in christianity i could not answer that question i just knew i needed jesus i knew i needed messiah but i did not know what i was believing technically i just knew i needed to pray in that name in his name and i needed him to get into the kingdom and what I thought was heaven at that time. I did not have this understanding of why he came. I did not know about the kingdom being split or the prophecy in Luke 133 or the depth of the prophecy in Ezekiel 36 and 37. I didn't know this. I was just going off what I was taught. So when, when we come into this walk, we have to truly make sure we understand what we believe, why we believe what we believe. If someone was to pull you to the side and ask you why you believe what you believe, you should be able to give a, a solid answer as to why you do. If you can't, that's a that's a marker for yourself to be like, okay, I'm not all the way solid right here. I don't know. So I got to go get solid right there. Likewise, in Christianity, when you talk to a person, um, the way you, the best way you witness, one of the best ways that I've learned from the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to witness, you don't come up to a person and you pull out this list and you say, hey, you wrong A through Z. They're going to shut you down. They're going to close off. You, don't, you just closed off an open, what could have been an open portal. For them to for you to witness to them because you're telling them they're doing something wrong there's a way to do that you have to make them come to that realization that okay oh wait now i see what you're saying so the way i witness as i'm led to is that i try to make people think if you can show a person holes in their theology in their doctrine in their doctrine then they then you'll see they'll start to see oh, okay now i see what you're saying you cannot justify the doctrine of lawlessness anywhere in your bible you can't but, a, but to a Christian person, you can't just walk up to them and tell them that they're wrong because they're not doing the law. They're not going to hear you. You want them to hear you. The Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. So there's a way you do it. Remember, Messiah told the disciples, he says, stay here in Jerusalem till you receive my Ruach HaKodesh, the, the Ruach HaKodesh, the gift, the promise. When you get the promise, it's go, he's going to give you power to be my witnesses. You can't do it in your own strength. 
If we, I've tried to witness in my own strength. You don't want to do that. I've been in conversations where the conversation has gone left before. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're being led to. And you only give a person, you don't try to give a person a whole book in one conversation. You only give them what they, because remember, when you came into this truth, it was a lot of information. Some of us was constantly seeking, constantly seeking, constantly seeking. Some of us, it may have been a little bit different type of flow, a different type of flow. So you have to treat it like that. If a person hungry, you feed them more. If they not, you just give them what they what you give them and you keep moving. And I, I would, y'all have heard me say this before if y'all been in the assembly. I say people eat when they're hungry. You can't force feed anybody. People will eat when they're hungry, though. If they're hungry, they're going to ask you for more. And then you'll know from the Ruach HaKodesh, okay, keep going. I like That's why I say it's just it's something we all learn. Because when you come into this truth, it's like, man, I done found something. I got to tell everybody, let me let me do it this way, do it this way. You still got to be led. You got to have a zeal according to knowledge. You know, Paul said that he was talking about his brothers have a zeal not according to knowledge. You got to have a zeal according to knowledge. There's a way to do things. Um, and there's a training period. You know, obviously, the Most High trains us to be his witnesses. And really, your lifestyle is one of your best witnesses. That's one of your people going to hear what you say, but they're going to watch what you do. So they're going to look at your attitude. They're going to look at how you handle adversity. They're going to look at how you do. Are you easily angered? Are you easily irritated? Are you are you all of you up and down all the time? Are you even killed? People look at that. So that's part of the fruit of the spirit. If you got the spirit, you're going to exhibit the fruit, which patience is one. And it's not easy because there are times where you definitely want to snap off. But you can't. You don't. You go with the you take the higher road and you don't snap off. Hallelujah. But these are things we all learn. We get molded for this. You know, we we being molded to be like him. It says that the most high is quick to he's quick to listen, but he's slow to anger. Paul says that we're supposed to be, or James, if I recall correctly, he says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. No, don't, don't open your mouth so quick. Listen first, be slow to uh slow to anger. Hallelujah. And the most high is patient. Be slow to anger. But he's, you know, he listens to our, our prayers. He hears us. We come to him as his children. We got these long lists. Father, I need, I need A, B, C, D. I need, like, we come to him like, you know, we just with a wish list sometimes. Instead of just coming to him, and he already know what we need before we pray. Instead of just coming to him and spending time with him. Meditation, prayer, fasting. Sometimes I think these are things we sleep on as a community of Israel. We don't fast enough. We don't meditate enough. Uh, we just fast when somebody calls a fast. Nah, fast is supposed to be in your own party in your life. It's supposed to be a part of your life. Uh, it, should be, it should be regular. Uh, same thing with meditation. You should find time. And it's, it's difficult, I know, with our schedules. But we have to make time where it's late at night. And it doesn't have to be this one hour thing. It doesn't have to be that. Your most sincere prayer can be five minutes. If you if you coming from your gut and you sincere about what you're saying, that's a sincere prayer. It's not the length of the prayer. It's the sincerity of it. It's where is it coming from? Are you for real? And most I know when we're real, and he know when we're playing. He know the difference. So we make that connection when we come to him and we're real. You can feel it when you, you he knows it. He can feel it from us. And you feel it when you make a connection with him. Hallelujah. So we got to be that way when we aim to pray or when we pray. Same thing when we fast, when we meditate. Most high done done some stuff for us that we didn't, we ain't even brought up to him in prayer in a long time. Come on, somebody. You know, the most I delivered you from someone, did something for you a long time ago. You probably was in the church when he did, but he still did it for you. And you ain't brought it up before him in prayer to thank him for it and remind him, Father, thank you for what you did for me 15 years ago, 10 years ago, last week. You know, hallelujah. So this this is what we do. That's what we meditate on. The writer in Psalm said, I meditate on your works. I meditate on what you did for me. Hallelujah. That's what that means. Hallelujah. So. Uh, in that regard, that's why I say we it's all about the heart. We Everybody's trying to make it. And I told people during the, the talk I gave, you don't have to be a Hebrew scholar to know the most high. If you had to be a Hebrew scholar, that would disqualify everybody. That would disqualify a lot of people. I say that. Couldn't know the most high because they weren't a Hebrew scholar. What about the deaf person or the blind person or the maimed person? Anybody can know the most high if they come to him from their heart through the avenues that he's outlined for them to come to him through. Keeping his laws the best you know how. Do the best you know. Master what you know. If you mess up, fess up and keep going. Righteous man falls seven times and said, but he get up every time. Why does it say that in the Bible? It says a righteous man will fall. It tells you that he's going to fall. 
but he gets up and he keeps going. The enemy wants you to, he's the one that comes to you when you fall and say, look, you messed up. You might as well come back over here and stay over here. Why are you doing this? Just keep going this way. You already fell. You off the track right now. You might as well stay. That's why people get so far away from church when they sin because they're like, man, I done messed up. I'm too, I'm too dirty to go back before the most high. No, that's when you go back. Hallelujah. Don't stop. Only time you you lose is when you when you stop fighting. That's when you lose. That's the only time you truly lose when you stop fighting. Keep going. Hallelujah. So, with that, we all learning, you know, and that's why I say when we when we make mistakes, you know, we just we do the best we can. Try to get that thing right the next time. Try to get that thing right the next time. Um, hallelujah. And. And just keep going. Just keep going. Don't give up, family. And with that, really, like I said, I didn't have a a lesson planned or anything like that. I wanted to show those places in Scripture uh, that we was talking about so we can get an understanding of what it means, what we do, when the Pesach is. You know what I mean? We also talked about the lamb. And like I said, I, 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 I take blame for that because I was part of those conversations where um, I gave off the impression that it was okay to eat the lamb and was actually for eating the lamb or cooking the lamb. Although genuinely inside, I did not feel like it was okay to eat the lamb. So, you know, and I, there's some, I, I feel, there's some things I've already prayed about, um, you know, in regard to this past weekend. So uh, that's why I say it's just, there are some things that I've prayed about personally, but what I do know, um, that's why I say what we do is we keep learning. Uh, one thing I realized is that I was not, I didn't prepare uh, the way I feel like I should have prepared. Um, and that's one thing, me personally, um, that I've that I've had to pray about, that I've prayed about, actually, my lack of preparation. Um, so, and then you know, that's why I say we all learn. We all. Continually trying to get better, continuously trying to get better. Um, you know, Paul even said when he was in one of his letters, Paul said he had not yet arrived. You got to understand, Paul was what you call a master of Torah. He was a Ph.D. in Torah, if you want to give it a title. He was a Ph.D. in Ph.D. He studied, studied under Gamaliel, who was ultra, ultra orthodox Torah. If you understand the history of these men, this is who he studied under. So this is what Paul knew. And he said that I have not yet arrived. He's still trying to make it. Then it says the righteous will barely make it in, right? So that's what I'm saying. We all working out our salvation with fear and trembling. As unto the most high. That's what we do every day. Every day. It's too easy. To, it, doing sin is easy. It's easy to sin. I can leave my house right now and sin. You can leave your house right now and sin. It don't take no effort to sin. It takes effort to do what's right. That's where the real effort come in and the real strength come in to, to stay on the narrow path. The broad path is too easy. Everybody on that path, you can easily go over there. It's no issue. That path lead to death though. It's gonna go off a cliff. It look good, it smell good, it tastes good, but it end in death. Hallelujah. But the narrow path is the hard path. So I said, this one is hard pressed, meaning you're gonna be challenged on this path, but this the way you gotta take. This the one that leads to life. It really ain't no other option. It's the one you gotta go. So if you're going to get on it, might as well get on it. Ask the most how to help you and walk that thing out. Best you know how. He's going to give you the strength to do it. He's the one that gives the strength to do it. That's why I say don't stop. Even if you get to a crawl pace, you're going really slow. Don't stop. Just keep going. Or you know it, you get your second win and you're walking strong and tall again. Hallelujah. Hopefully I'm making sense, family. Felt like I was rambling a little bit right there. You're making sense. Ta da. But I love my, my brothers and sisters. Um I'm glad we, we all trying to, you know, get it right, do what's right. Um and I'm grateful for the most high of mercy. Hallelujah. And I and I in my own personal life, and I know everybody else is grateful for his mercy in their lives as well. Hallelujah. So with that family, I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't have much, much more that was, uh, 
I want a uh, uh, Cote Felicia. I see you on. I want to ask you: Did your son leave a cell phone in my van? I don't think so. He would have said something by now. Shalom, everybody. Hey, sisters. Good to see y'all. Hear y'all. Everybody. Hey. 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 <laughs> Can't wait to see you guys next time. Uh, I'm on. Uh, I'm on. Uh, as usual. Um when I have here in Texas with the grandbaby. So he's um, trying to change diapers and make bottles, but I'm listening. <laughs> no, no worries. I think we're going to go ahead okay. and close out. My um, my youngest just told my, well, my middle, she told me she's hungry. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and. Who's that, Felicia? That's me. <laughs> oh. Hey. Flip it. So, how do I flip it? I don't even know how to flip it. I just wanna just wanna brighten the moment with a cute little face. Look, wait a minute. I don't know how to turn it around. Well, I'll do that. Say hi. Say hi to the sisters. Uh, my my grandbaby. He's so sweet. <laughs> Oop, don't want to show your business. We're trying to change the diaper. All right. Shalom, everybody. Hello. Yeah, let, let me pray us out, family. And out. Yeah, this is my middle daughter right now. Oh. She's hanging out with dad today. Oh, yeah. how cute. Probably, All probably, right. uh, probably take her to the P-A-R-K in a minute. So don't say it, please. I was so, I was like. Don't say it. Just, that's why we spelling right now. She probably know what I'm saying. You know what that means? She knew exactly what that meant. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what that means, park, huh? That's right. That's good job. Good job. So now I got to take her to the park. So, uh, but hallelujah. So, so I'll pray for his family. Um, I love your honesty. Thank you. And you, you're really cool, like I told you. You're cool, dude. <laughs> to, to, Toda, Toda, my cool sister. <laughs> I don't get you angry. You're cool. <laughs> you, you and Sophia are awesome. still trying to get me, y'all trying to get me riled up? Yeah, I want to see your other side. <laughs> <laughs> no. that's, that's the old man. That's the old uh, man. I, I put him away. I, I had to okay. kill the old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, that's what I was telling you. My, my, that the anger comes out in, in the proper situation. When the Ruach Hako Desk leads me to pull the sword out, I pull the sword. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So Yeah, so we can cut the Edomites and Esau, right? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I try to tell my brothers, I actually use that analogy when I say when we witness. Because mm. you I don't I don't use the I don't I try to get away from the uh, what you call the contention. I try to have a dialogue. But if I'm in a conversation with somebody where they ain't trying to have a dialogue, they're trying to be on some foolishness or something different, then I pull the sword out. That's when the Ruach HaGodesh tell me to pull the sword out. But that's why I say, for the most part, I, I try to stay as, you know, I try to follow him the way the, the, the spirit of the Most High leads me. So if he leads me into a situation where he says, okay, pull your sword out, then I pull the sword out. He, um, you know, like he said, one of the fruit of this, this uh, spirit is meekness and patience. And I take no credit, Akoti. None at all. All right. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I love being a dad. He just do something to you. That's nice. You see yourself? That's not a necklace. All right, I'm going to pray, okay? You want to pray with us? Right, I'm gonna pray. You want to pray? You can stand right there. Can I get some room to pray? <laughs> right. You can stand by me. That's fine. All right. Hallelujah. We'll pray. I was going to play a, a praise song, family, but I'll let y'all get your own praise on. I Love You, Yah, was the one that I was thinking about playing by um, Sounds of Sinai. I love you, Yah, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my being rejoice, take joy, my Father, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Hallelujah. So, 
Y'all could have praised with me if y'all wanted to. Uh, Don't know the song. We a different way. Don't know the song. <laughs> Well, oh, I don't know that song. No, I don't. I love you, yeah, and I lift my voice. That's all we know. It. Oh, that song, that one. Yeah, yeah. This one is a little bit more deep. I'll share the link in the chat, actually, so you can you can jam this. Are the same songs or different songs? Is it the same song that Mercy was singing? You were singing. I think my song is different. Um, yeah. Hers, hers is, I think, an older song. Right, Marcia? That's an older song. Take, take joy, my eye, in what you see. And what you hear. This is the song what right here. Hear, let it be a clean offering, a sacrifice, something like that. Yeah, it sounds what different from what he was singing. I'm going to just go ahead and sing. I'm going to just play it. And then we'll close out with prayer after that. How about that? Okay. I'll just, I just play it. Let me just play it. Hallelujah. Can you jam with me? Can you jam with me? Yeah.
pray us out and then um i'm gonna let us that was the song i was talking about so i'm gonna pray us out family i left off the brick <laughs> you did hold on sweetie stand right here for a second you stand beside me <clears throat> all right i'm gonna pray us out family and then we can uh reconvene tomorrow hallelujah hallelujah <clears throat> hallelujah hua all praise be unto you, Father Yahuwah. Abba, we come to you right now and we thank you, Father, for your mercy, for your goodness. Thank you, Father, for your many, many, many chances that you have given us, Abba. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to come together and you being in the midst of us, Abba. Hallelujah. Thank you for that you are continuously leading us and guiding us in all that we do. Please, Abba, continue to light our paths and guide our steps and show us how to properly apply your word to our lives hallelujah we pray father also that you will let the uh, let this evening and, and this this day the remainder of this day be a a joyous and refreshing evening father as we we go into the shabbat hallelujah let it be a restful and a peaceful shabbat a, a good uh, and an excellent day hallelujah we pray father also that your word you let your word take deep root in our hearts and bear much good fruit in our lives. Hallelujah. All for your esteem and your name's sake. Let those who see us and hear us see you and hear you and you and realize that we are your children. Hallelujah. We pray, Father, also, I pray for the, the, the sisters on the call that you remove all sickness and illness and disease from their bodies, remove all misfunction and malfunction and dysfunction from their bodies, and bless them with excellent health and long life. Hallelujah. Uh, Father, you know the traumas that we've experienced in our lives, the things that we're still holding on to, those things that have affected us, that, that, that we, we're holding on to, that baggage that we're still carrying. Please remove that from the crevices of our minds, Father, and purge us and cleanse us of everything in us that's not pleasing to you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, Father. We give all praise, we give all honor and esteem unto you. And we confess and repent our sins and we thank you for your faithfulness. We ask, God, that you blot out our transgressions according to your loving kindness. It's in the mighty name of Yahusha Hamashiach that we pray. And Father, we say, we love you, Father. Hallelujah. And we thank you for your perfect love for us. It is in the mighty name of Yahusha Hamashiach that we pray. We give all praise unto your mighty name, Father. We say, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Shalom, all. Shalom, shalom, shalom. family. Shalom. Enjoy the rest of your day. Shalom, shalom. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye um, Felicia and your grandson. And bye, um, your daughter. Shalom, bye. Bye-bye. See you guys soon. Later.